Okay, welcome to episode 7 of our Healthy Living Podcast. In this episode, we're pretty much going to talk about potassium. Now, what have we been doing so far is talking about the different deficiencies, quote unquote, in the carnivore diet. This comes from an article on self-decode. It's entitled... 17 deficiencies from the carnivore diet uh written by someone with a bachelor i'm guessing this is a bachelor of science in biology and this was pretty much november 3rd 2021 so this was a rather recent article and so far we've been doing our own research on each of these deficiencies quote unquote and we begin to notice that they're really not deficiencies because on the carnivore diet, you absorb more of the nutrients that you eat. And this is an objective fact. You can't deny that because it is known that animal, not animals, but plants have compounds that inhibit the absorption of minerals and nutrients. And that's because that is their defense mechanism due to evolution and all those other factors that's how they help persuade animals and other organisms not to eat them pretty much animals so now we're talking about potassium so according to this article he says potassium is an essential nutrient that regulates fluid balance in cells and blood pressure. Symptoms of deficiency include increased blood pressure, kidney stones, constipation, muscle weakness, and irregular heartbeat. So that gives us a little information, a little short snippet of what potassium does, why it's important. Now, this next part you need to pay attention to. He says the daily recommended intake of potassium is at least 2600 to 3400 milligrams for an adult, though the USDA recommends 4700 milligrams. Now, you might assume from reading this that he's saying that according to the USDA the daily recommended intake of potassium is at least 2,600 to 3,400 milligrams for an adult. But that's technically not what he's saying. He's just saying the daily recommended intake of that. But the USDA recommends 4,700 milligrams. So the USDA can recommend that. But they're not telling us our recommended. So I'm trying to figure out who told him or where did he get this material for the recommended intake that's point one but we can we can go off of that now on these other things for meal scenarios he basically said potassium is vital for maintaining fluid balance and blood pressure unlike plant foods meats are low in this mineral octopus and salmon are decent sources so now we're going to go on to our next resource now i did find the resource uh, from Live Ancestral. I kind of was hesitant of using this, but this is not going to be the main resource. This is just another side resource because, of course, if anyone knows about the Liver King and the little thing that was going out with him and how it was revealed and proven that he was using steroids to support his claims and he wasn't natural and all that stuff so people can look unfavorably towards resources on this website but just because one person lied or manipulated others on one point doesn't mean like everything they said was untrue or any information going forward is untrue so I'll have the site in the description for this one. Now, let's go to the main site that I like. Dr. Kilts. Carnivore diet, potassium, risk, benefits, and foods. So I'll have this link in the description so you can read. He talks about the roles of potassium in the diet, signs of carnivore diet, potassium deficiency. And he gives us an eating plan now 
the eating plan is one day eating plan that puts you at 102% of your carnivore diet. This is strictly meat. Ribeye steak will give you t- one pound of ribeye steak will give you 24%. Six ounce of bacon give you 33%. One mug carnivore bone broth, 20%. Six ounce ground beef, 25%. If that sounds like a lot, it doesn't sound like a lot to me. In fact, it sounds like easy stuff because i've been doing carnivore three four months and i pretty much can eat all that stuff in one sitting now then he gives you the levels of stuff like from highest to lowest so if you were looking for like some daily intake of stuff salt cod i'm i think salt cod is different from white cod but if you eat eight ounces of that then it gives you 3353 milligrams which from his resources is 111% of your daily intake, but you'll get a lot from salt cod. Apparently that's a specialty dish. And then you get ground chicken, eight ounces provides 1,557 milligrams. So if you're a ground chicken person and you prefer that over the chicken breast, then you can eat that. I eat chicken breast more because I think that's cheaper, per ounce or per pound or whatever you eat that with plus i guess with ground chicken i like to have like some sauce or something this might not be carnivore uh but mayonnaise but when i use mayonnaise i use primal kitchen mayonnaise so it's used avocado oil instead of soybean oil so it's like uh However you want to fit that. Some people be all like, okay, that's, uh, it's, a, it's allowed. It's an oil. It's fat. It's not fruit. You don't have all those extra lectins and all the stuff that's the real problem from plants. But you can get an 8-ounce serving of salmon and get 1,444 milligrams. That should give you 48% of your daily intake. So you can get almost half of your daily intake for that amount and you should be able to eat more if you're doing carnivore and then eight ounces of the bacon which will probably be more common 45 percent of your daily intake uh halibuts not and then ground beef eight ounces will give you 33 percent of your daily intake so you can get your daily intake oh and that's based off of you have to remember because we talked about this in a previous episode that all the day, daily recommended values that research is coming from people who have predominantly eaten an american diet which is high in carbs which is high in plant foods which is high in all those lectins and stuff like that that is hindering your absorption of nutrients and minerals so you would normally have to eat more on a carnivore diet, when you don't eliminate all this stuff and you're absorbing more of the food, absorbing more of the resources, then you don't have to eat that much. But, of course, we're getting more information about the carnivore diet, more research is being done. So I'm really excited about the new information that we'll have to improve our health, improve our performance, and probably even eat some people think it's more expensive to eat on the carnivore diet than versus the american diet now if you consider the lowest end of the spectrum and like you're actually poor and you have to eat ramen noodles and all of this like the super basic staples well staple in american diet then I can understand why you'll see, okay, yeah, it's just cheaper. Because I'll say, yeah, if you're buying ramen noodles and other stuff instead of, like, real food, then, yeah, it'll be cheaper. But, it, like, if you're doing a traditional American diet and you're eating out and going to these fast food restaurants to get a burger and you're buying cereal when you go to the store and sandwich foods, including the bread, then comparatively... It's not going to be more expensive. In fact, it could even be cheaper if you go on a carnivore diet because you're eating strict, you're buying strictly the food that you're going to eat and absorb. You don't need as many condiments because then you start a like food by itself. 
so you're not as likely to like drench it with sauce and stuff i know i know people with their hamburgers like to drench it in ketchup or mustard or stuff like that and then even with sandwiches like to drench it in mayonnaise and all this so i know that's going on a tangent that's not necessarily everyone but that's an issue and plus there's the obvious issue of health for health reason that when you start to eat healthier uh carnivore over the american traditional american diet then you are healthier you don't have to buy as many supplements if you have been buying supplements and when you start to reduce those chronic illnesses and chronic diseases you're buying less pills less drugs to make yourself feel better and you're just buying less of that uh i've noticed that preferably i would have been on carnivore like much earlier instead of trying the I wouldn't say that I was actually plant based, but trying the more keto thing with more foods because then I started listening to all these things about supplement, get this elderberry, get this protein powder, all that stuff. Uh, and those things cost money. Like, I've been able to really save money by just eating meat instead of, and then not having to go through buying, hey, let's get this magnesium pill. You really don't need all that stuff actually so i like living more naturally because it's just cheaper in the long run if you just eat meat uh and then i have nothing against cheeses or stuff like that because i still like my snacks too uh i love the parmesan crisp i couldn't find them this time when i went to my hall unfortunately uh but it still fits into i don't want to say keto carnivore but it's not as strict carnivore when you start adding cheeses. But it's an auto product. Cheeses are allowed. You have to get the proper cheese too. Because certain cheeses, well, most cheeses, I would say. I'm not an expert on cheeses. But a lot of cheeses have carbs in obviously, because it's made of milk. But then certain cheeses, the way it's made, the way it's, I don't know, pasteurized or whatever. I'm not a cheese expert. But they take the carbs out. Or they remove the cards in the final product. I don't, I don't know. Cheese it. But the point is, Parmesan doesn't have any carbs in it. So that's good. Uh, feta cheese, I noticed that didn't have anything. Um, and then for my snacks, I love these macadamia nuts. Do have a little bit of carbs. And it's really high in fat, so you can overeat those. But I've been slowly reducing that like just to have just a little bit when i do eat it and now i'm in the phase where i'm just eating it every other day now just so i can it can be a treat because they're pretty good but anyway uh that's enough for that potassium you can get it from carnivore you don't need as much carnivore as uh, not as much carnivore you don't need as much potassium as they say you do and I'll leave these links to these websites in the description. Hopefully you take this information. If you're feeling anxious about getting potassium, uh, just eat meat. Uh, beef, beef is king. Is, has anyone said that yet? Beef is king? I might have to look it up. I'm pretty sure someone has, but I'll look that up later. Because that might be another one of my slogans. <laughs>